This is good Lena back to say. I'm on Terrence broadcast today. And you know what? It's the best in the town. So listen up what I'm putting down. You're listening to Go Karen TV. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to today's Go Tier and TV show. That's right, it's episode 419. As you heard in the beginning, we were welcoming for the very first time Gremlina of the Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling, aka Glow. Gremlina, how are you doing today? Yes, fine. How are you doing today? Wonderful. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us today. Really appreciate it. No problem. Well, uh, Gremlina, I want to start off first and foremost by saying that, uh, you know, we're so excited to have you on here, and uh, I've done some research on you. Don't worry, I wasn't doing too much Facebook stalking, but we do have to give a shout out to the uh, person that helped us link this uh, audio podcast up, and that is uh, one of your sister glow girls, uh, Roxy Astor. So if she's listening today, I want to say hi to Roxy, and thank you for um, bringing us together here. Uh, Grim- yeah, girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Big shout out to Roxy. Um, so, yeah. yeah, Gremlina, I- I'm so excited to get you on here. You know, uh, out of all my video podcasts that I do, I- I'm always looking forward to interviewing professional wrestlers, and especially now that I found, you know, and discovered, um, you know, not only Roxy and yourself, but the other Glow Girls. Uh, it- this is just fascinating because I want to start this by saying, you know, I told Roxy this that I was a huge Glow fan uh, growing up. I was in my teens watching and had a lot of fun. And you guys revolutionized something. You guys were the very, or you ladies, excuse me. You ladies were the very first to have a one-hour syndicated television show that was on an episodic series, and it only featured ladies. I mean, you know, uh, you were the stars, the women, the gorgeous ladies of wrestling, something that was uh, done for the very first time and hasn't really been done on a mainstream platform since then. We'll get to talking about Wrestlelicious, which is reviving here. But, um, you know, I want to ask you, first and foremost, um, again, I've done some research on you. I know that you were a wrestling fan growing up. Um, And, you know, how, I guess, take us back to the beginning um, of you watching Glow on TV and watching wrestling and that transition of you wanting to do this for a living? Well, um, I started watching wrestling. My dad, my daddy took me to my first match when I was six years old. Right. And then it was, Saturday was cartoons, American bandstand, and wrestling. (laughs) I mean, I'm old school, okay? I'm not going to lie. I'm not a, I'm not a young chicken. So I've been back in the day. <laughs> and as a teenager, naturally, when the hormones kicked in, it was like, hey, these guys aren't that bad looking. <laughs> and then it got to be more of um, when I took uh, mass communications and journalism in college, okay. I got to... I dated a photographer for Pro Wrestling Illustrated and started going to the matches and started to meet and develop, I won't say relationships, but acquaintances and friendships. And it was kind of funny because I would be like, you know, that whole just didn't look quite right, you know. Yeah. And when I, when I moved to New York, I continued that by, you know, I, I'm going to go on record. I was never a ring rat. I never <laughs> slept, I never slept with any of them. Not that I couldn't have, and not that there weren't offers and opportunities. <laughs> but I respected myself, and I respected them. Absolutely. These men were married and had families. I was under no illusion. But mm-hmm. I, was always, I was always there to buy them a beer, to be a shoulder to talk to, a ride to the airport, a help get rid of ring rats that they didn't want around, <laughs> um, and stuff like that, and I developed friendships with a lot of WWE wrestlers, and wrestling has just always been a part of who I am. And honestly, at four foot, I'm four foot eight and a half inches tall. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's not really wrestling material when you look at the Amazons in the ring, like uh, Wendy Richter, Fabulous Lula, oh, right? You know. Old school, which is what I'm, you know, I have to go back to that era. Sure. And even the defense today. Sure. I mean, you, you didn't see four foot eight, 105 pounds dripping wet in the ring. <laughs> and uh, my ex, uh, we were watching uh, 
we were big on wrestling, so we watched any wrestling that would come on TV. Okay. And we were, I started watching Glow. Okay. And first thing I, I, I noticed was, wow, mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. is this is amazing. Yep. These are women doing this, <laughs> and I just fell for the. I mean, the characters of Hollywood and Ashley Cartier and CG and Mishka. I was just like, wow, these are some amazing women. Absolutely. Well. They have blurbs and uh, and advertisements during the show, and you know, hey, if you want to be a wrestler, or if you know somebody that wants to be a glow girl, a wrestler, da 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 da, call the Riviera Hotel for locations of tryouts and stuff. Well, at the time, my ex's ex girlfriend wanted to go. Okay. She was a friend, mm-hmm. and she was five foot eight, a big woman. Wow. Yeah. So we we found out that the next tryout was in Commerce, Georgia. And right. being that we were on the East Coast, we could, you know, that was an all-night drive. Mm, wow. And honestly, when I went down there, I was wearing a pair of blue jeans and a hot rod t-shirt because Piper was my man. He still is to this day, even May he rest in peace. Yes. Piper was my idol, my icon. Yes, absolutely. And I was wearing blue jeans, a hot rod t-shirt. <laughs> and I'd been in a car all night. I had to change your help, change your flat tire on the way down. I was tired, cranky, and just not really ready for any BS. Oh. Well, the director and the writer, when we got there, most of the other girls were gone. All the other girls were gone, and they were getting ready to just wrap it up. And we got there late because of the flat tire and stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, director Matt, he's brilliant. Matt Simber is a brilliant genius. I will not take away one ounce with what he created in Glow. Sure. And he he knew how to bring out a character or the best or worst than you. Mm-hmm. He was blunt. He was very... He wasn't very... He, he didn't put punches. He was mm-hmm. blunt. Mm-hmm. Well, he basically told my friend, and I'm standing there with my ex and her, he basically told her that the show was called The Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling, and she was too ugly for his show. Now, he was talking about uh, your fr- the ex's friend, is that right? Yeah. Oh, wow. My goodness. So I looked around, looked at him in the head right away, you know what? F you. And <laughs> Good Next for thing you. I know, they're, they're looking at me and they went, you are what we want. <laughs> We want you. That's awesome. I said, are you out of your mind? I said, let me bring it back a bit here, people. Are you looking at me? I'm not a wrestler. I'm four foot eight and a half inches tall. I'm teeny. Teeny. I I do not look like a wrestler. We don't care. We want you. Are you? So three months later, like Roxy described it, I'm in a room <laughs> at the clubhouse at the Canyon Club Apartments getting room assignment. My roommate was Big Bad Mama, by the way. Mm-hmm. And the next day, 9 a.m., we were in there starting the train. I mean, aerobics, cardio, gymnastics, running the ropes, wrestling holds. I mean, we worked from 9 in the morning till 5, 6 o'clock at night on physical stuff, the ring stuff, the training, in there, you know, and then we had memberships to a gym. We did weight training. Mm. I did, I, I ran track because Matt was very fond of calling me a fat little putz at 105 pounds. Mm-hmm. So I was going to be like, that's fine. <laughs> and, um, and then after dinner, we would all meet at the house or at a location and work on character development. And stuff like that. And it was Monday through Friday. That was the schedule. That sounds so intense. I know that um, the first two seasons, the trainer was Mondo Guerrero. But when you arrived there, uh, were you, uh, I believe, trained by uh, Colonel Ninochka? Yes, Colonel Ninochka. How was that, uh, being trained under her tutelage? Well, first of all, I'm going to be blunt. I was kind of starstruck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was one of the ones you were watching, uh, right. 
here I am. There's Colonel Nanuchka. Mm -hmm. There's Hollywood. There's mm -hmm. Mount Stephen. There's Sally the Farmer's daughter. <laughs> and for a short time, Debbie Debutante. Mm -hmm. I'm like going, wow. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> and like I said, having hung around the male wrestlers, I don't start struck easy, but I was like, wow. Yeah. And yeah. let's just say the Mitch was an amazing trainer. Good. She, I think she carried on the legacy that Mondo had set up with the training. Mm -hmm. And Mitchell mm -hmm. was, again, smoother. Okay. And, I mean, Epsom Salt was my best friend. Mm-hmm. That's some salt and uh, Tylenol, anything, any, you know, over-the-counter stuff, because Matt was very strict. Wow, wow. He had curfews. Good girls and bad girls couldn't hang out together. Right. Mm -hmm. In public. k -fed. No drugs. No, no drugs. Watch your drinking. And, that, I mean, it was like we were in a sorority. Yeah. And he he had a tight rein on, you know, you do any of this, you're out of here. Mm -hmm. Not saying that we didn't find ways around that. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it wasn't like what you hear about rampant drug use or steroids. Yeah. Matt had a clean show. Good. You didn't smoke. You didn't do drugs. You, you kept your drinking to a minimum. Mm -hmm. You had a curfew. And you had better be re re ready, willing, and able the next morning to put in that work. Oh, I love it. They really took that seriously. It wasn't uh, like one of these, uh, you know, amateur kind of um, training schools or facilities. It sounds very professional from what you're describing. It was. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and, girls, and girls dropped out. Right, left, up, and down. Yeah, that's what I would think. I mean, y'all that uh, survived that, you know, uh, gosh, uh, all the credit goes to you for sticking it out because I think the normal average person would have just said, you know, screw this, we're out of here. <laughs> and a lot of the girls that gave up, you know, I, I don't know what they're doing now. Yeah. Then some of the girls had to leave because of injury. Oh, goodness. And some of the girls that just said, hey, you can't cut it. You know, oh. you're not cutting it. Wow. And uh, there were times where he threatened me. I'm going to be honest. Mm -hmm. Sure. Oh, yeah, I believe you. <laughs> uh, I'm not the easiest person to train because I don't like to take orders. As you can tell by my character, Grimlina, I don't like to take orders. I like to give orders. <laughs> and uh, Matt and I, we, we had many had uh, we butted heads. Oh yeah. You know on the you know because. He actually wanted me to be even cooler to Daisy and use the chain on Daisy that she, I mean, I'm, you know, I refused. And that's why I ended up with a whip. And believe me, it's kind of funny going into an adult store with your director or boss <laughs> and, and, writer, and picking up a whip. Um, <laughs> in Las Vegas. Um, <laughs> And, you know, Roxy, Roxy did my hair. She is responsible mm -hmm. for the cut and color that, you know, the white hair with the black stripe and all. Roxy did the look. Uh, Nanichka's mother was the costume lady. Oh, okay. Nanichka did that. all the beautiful costumes, yes. Okay. And uh, she threw me in snake skin. I watched the movie Gremlins. <laughs> Matt told me that little people were mean, evil, vicious ankle biters, and I was Gremlina. Oh now, oh so you you came up with the name Grimlina. Well, he did. He he came up with that. Oh, that's brilliant. I, I love that name. I think it's like so cool. It really, uh, you know, I've well, never heard... I, he said that little people were mean, evil, vicious ankle biters. <laughs> and oh, yeah. uh, the Gremlins was two years old at the time. Okay. And I watched okay. that and. Naturally, I'm not the warm, cuddly Mogwai type that Gizmo was. <laughs> you were the, uh, yeah, evil uh, gremlin. <laughs> I was more striped. Yeah, you weren't and like uh, I, Gizmo. <laughs> I know. Gizmo, now I'm not saying I couldn't be, you know, but I have more of a heel persona mentality. Yeah, certainly. And, yeah. and then I just, I listened to the way Stripe talked, you know, when he said, 
and dum, and boo. And I took that, and of course, being, it still bothers my throat today, and of course, being a female, I wanted to amp it up a notch. And I figured, who is the scariest person in everyone's childhood memory? Why, the Wicked Witch of the West from The Wizard of Oz. Mm-hmm. There you go. So, and she would tickle and talk like, I'll get you, my pretty. <laughs> so there you have, yeah, the great one, right? <laughs> I love it. Combi- it was a combination fruit of Stripe. Yeah. And the Wicked Witch of the West. That's a unique hybrid. I, I love it. That That's a great combination. Uh, it, it's brilliant. Yeah. You were cast so brilliantly, and that goes to say for, again, I, I, I got to say, like, just about 100% of the entire cast of GLOW, uh, everybody who was supposed to be a baby face was a baby face. Everybody like yourself who was supposed to be a heel. I couldn't imagine you being a baby face. Uh, but I, <laughs> I, you had mentioned Daisy, and I know the um, ending uh, with Daisy turning on you uh, with your match, uh, I guess you, I think you guys were against Zelda, but talk about uh, Daisy as a uh, partner and teaming up with her. Um, how was that experience? She was awesome. Okay. You guys complimented Daisy, each other very well. Well, Matt and Steve's idea was to have sort of like, if you've ever read the book of Mice and Men, mm-hmm. Or seen the movie of Mice and Men, the big guy being bullied by the small guy. Yeah, 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 right. Mm-hmm. It was sort of the Mice and Men dynamic between me and Daisy. Okay. And actually, I cried because of the way Matt wanted me to treat Daisy because, mm-hmm. okay, mm-hmm. I'm not really the mean, evil, vicious ankle biter. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a cookie. I'm, I'm a soft touch. I'm a cookie. <laughs> anyway, but you piss me off and I'm going to go give my, I'm going to go gremlin on you. <laughs> as we call it. And, you know, I couldn't have asked for a better partner. I mean, Daisy, and let's face it, Daisy was probably one of the better wrestlers in GLOW. Okay. I mean, she's the GLOW champion. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She's the GLOW champion, undefeated mm-hmm. at this point. Okay, wow. And mm-hmm. Daisy could wrestle. She could, I mean... Daisy was amazing, and that's why they called her the Awesome Daisy because she, she is six. She literally, really is six foot two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She looks so tall on TV too. I mean, the TV ads, you know. Uh, yeah. Height. <laughs> she, uh, she's not. Uh, when they said at six foot two, that's the truth. She is as tall. And if you look at the afterglow some of the pictures and stuff, you see me standing next to Daisy. Mm-hmm. It's real. It's real. I mean, the, the height dynamic is real. And, yeah. uh, and, uh, she was, she was wonderful to work with. Uh, she was, I can't say enough good about it because she was great in the ring. I mean, gosh, you know, but then again, we had a lot of great talent in season three. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you just named a bunch of them earlier. Uh, I, I'll ask you, uh, I'm going to talk about word association with some of these uh, Glow Girls, but um, before we get to that, let me ask you this. Uh, what are your memories of, I, I think, was if this is, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, maybe one of your last final matches was uh, when, uh, excuse me, Daisy was turning on you, and you were going to mm-hmm. be programmed in the feud against uh, Zelda, is that correct? Zelda, God love us. Um, <laughs> basically put, I wrote, I, me and the writer worked together on that because I knew I was losing the at that point. I had injured my knee. Oh, right. Mm-hmm. That's right. I had blown out my knee. Mm-hmm. And I was, what people didn't see under the costume is I was wearing a knee brace. Oh, wow. Mm. I had a special knee brace under my costume. Wow. And if you look at some of my matches, you'll see some of them where I'm limping. And that's the day oh. after. That is the day after I blew out my knee, and I still went in there and wrestled three three matches. Oh my God! Oh wow! And when, at, during the tour, I made a decision and talked to my ex, and we had a lot of personal family stuff going on, and he was fighting a custody battle with his ex-wife and stuff. So. Mm-hmm. I just couldn't see me staying in glow when I couldn't give it 110% or concentrate. Sure. And 
with my knee the way it was, it was I was scared. I'm going to be mm-hmm. blunt. I was terrified every time I stepped in the ring after I blew out my knee. Oh, I, and yeah. don't blame you. And if, you, if you've ever watched any of my matches, there's only one glow girl that ever took me off my feet and slammed me. And that was Sunny the California girl. Oh, I didn't realize that. Huh. Yeah. Wow. And uh, so I got together with Steve and I said, hey, look, if this is going to be my finale, I said, if I'm going to go out, I said, I want to go out a big way. That's when we came up with the whole tra- me being tossed in the trash can gimmick. Oh, gotcha. I see. Huh. But you know, I it, you know, if if I had one regret, I would have liked to stay around a little bit more. I would have liked to have done a solo match with Zelda. Mm. Mm-hmm. Because what mm-hmm. people don't know is when we were training, because Zelda and I were about the same size and build, mm-hmm. we worked together, mm. and we we really were good as opponents. Mm-hmm. I could, mm-hmm. uh, she could hit. I mean, we could hip toss each other. We could. I mean, we really could do some. I would have loved to have that one last match, and that would have been it. I would have loved to have one solo match with Zelda to show the public that you know, Gremlina could wrestle a little. I mean, she wasn't just this screeching little annoying <laughs> <in the> ringside. <laughs> I, I was no Roxy or Daisy or Danushka or, you know, some of the great wrestlers we had in Glow. Mm-hmm. But I could do it. Yeah. Uh, let's let's do this. Uh, that, that's impressive. How about we go back to something you talked about in the beginning of the video blog. When you were watching Glow, uh, there were a couple of ladies who were an inspiration, and uh, you kind of emulated after. Uh, let's do some word association and maybe talk about each of these people that I'm going to name off. Uh, someone you named earlier, Ashley Cartier. Uh, what comes to mind when I mention her name? Class, fun, mm-hmm. a delight, a delightful girl, lady, a uh, funny lady, mm-hmm. gorgeous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good. How, how about uh, Hollywood? That's my girl. <laughs> she, she's my sweetheart. <laughs> Holly. I mean, what got me is is her rap. Her rap <laughs> describes it better than I could. She's tough, <laughs> hot, strong, and slick. She knew every dirty trick. And Hollywood is an amazing, amazing sweetheart woman. I love her to death. Um, one of my one fond memory is when we were on tour. The girls went out in Biloxi or some, I, th- I think it was Biloxi. Everybody decided to go out shopping or hit the bars or do something. Mm-hmm. Holly and I stayed behind, and here we are sitting in our sweatsuits, sweatpants and sweatshirts, and just we got to know each other. We just talked. That's cool. That's really We cool. just talked about, you know, our lives, you know, you know, what we were feeling about low, you know, opponents, this and it. We just got to know each other, and I adore Hollywood. I mean, I, I adore all my glow sisters, but yeah. That's your girl, though. <laughs> She's one of them. <laughs> How about, uh, let's talk about what comes to mind with, uh, like you mentioned earlier, your roommate during the season, Big Bad Mama. She was Mama. <laughs> Seriously, was she was mama to all of us. <laughs> yeah, a sweeter, kinder, wonderful, wise woman you'll never meet. And mm-hmm. the world lost, uh, the world suffered a loss. She was mm-hmm. all our mama. Mm-hmm. She was not just bad girl's mama. She was a good girl's mama. She was mama. That's awesome. I, I detected that when I watched the DVD documentary, which we'll get to uh, momentarily, too. But, yeah, I think anybody who watched that could tell uh, she had a genuine heart and all the girls looked up to her. Uh, how about, uh, here's another name. Uh, you mentioned her earlier, the girl that did your hair, Roxy Astor. What can I say about my girl, Roxy? <laughs> she, now, look. That woman is amazing. She's yeah. brilliant. Yep. She is creative. Yes. Mm-hmm. And don't let it fool you. She could have been a heel. Yeah. She, yeah. I, she, I agree. Mm-hmm. She has that sass, that possession. She could have done it. She yeah. could have been a heel. 
And I, I mean, I love her. Uh, she's a sounding board. We sound off ideas on each other. We talk to each other. You know, I mean, I love Roxy. That's awesome. And then how about, uh, here's another name, Mountain Fuji. You mentioned her earlier. She's the heart of GLOW. Mm -hmm. She is the heart and soul of GLOW. Another one that they focused on in the DVD documentary. Um, and then uh, how about uh, the farmer's daughter? You mentioned her as well. <laughs> <laughs> Sally was good. Sally was a professional. Mm -hmm. Sally can get a little rough in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, she didn't mean it. At least I hope she didn't. Sally was a tough cookie. I mean, she's tough as well. <laughs> and then uh, finally, um, how about this girl? You mentioned her. She's going to actually be our next guest on episode 420. Uh, some California girl. Oh, you mean Sunny? Well, what can you say about somebody who's so bright and bubbly <laughs> and outgoing? <laughs> Sunny's a trip. Sunny's a sweetheart. She's just got a heart of gold. She's outgoing. She's sunshine. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, I can't. I, I can't. There's a couple others that I have to I have to give props to. Yeah, I loved I loved my jailbait. Jailbait was like <laughs> a little sister. Fact is, jailbait was very sweet. I when I she came and spent the weekend with me here in Virginia last summer. Oh, how cool! Wow. We got on vacation, and I I missed her the minute the door shut when she left. Oh wow. And uh, I stayed with her overnight when I came out to California. Mm -hmm. And every time, it seems like every time I go to California to do a glow thing, like the Afterglow or Fendi Action, mm -hmm. I always end up staying with MTV. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, is she's Auntie M. She's <laughs> funny, outgoing, pop. All these girls are positive. You got to understand that. Yeah. And yeah. MTV has opened her home to me and let me let me stay with her when I come out. You know. And Daisy, I got a call from her three days ago. She's like, "Dude, what do you think about this cruise? I'm excited." And you know, <laughs> I mean, it's just like it's thirty years, but no time passes. Yeah, no, I, I know what you mean, yeah. And you all look great. It, it, seriously, every single one of you all, uh, you look wonderful, and uh, uh, we're definitely going to talk about the Afterglow cruise coming up. Um, now, okay. let me ask you this. Um, so let's talk about the DVD documentary maybe here briefly. Um, I watched it recently, and uh, when I interviewed your other girl, Roxy, um, she had mentioned that not enough time was given to the girls. And you know what? After watching it, it didn't process, but I totally agree with that assessment. What's your uh, evaluation uh, post watching the. D I mean, it was a well done documentary, no question. You know, it covered a lot, but what's your, uh, you know, personal opinion on the whole uh, documentary itself? Some of, uh, some of the still photographs I contributed. Oh, how cool. Oh, wow. Wow. And of course, in the bonus features, it's my match with Zell. It's me and Daisy's match with Zell, the where I get tossed in the trash. I made the bonus feature. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um, it's an, it's ironic because when I left Glow, mm -hmm. I had put it behind me. Mm -hmm. I went back to being, you know, I got married, got divorced, mm -hmm. helped raise my stepson for a few years. Mm -hmm. Uh, I went back into my fallback career. I'm an accountant. Believe it or not, Marina is a number cruncher. <laughs> it's like the most and unlikely. <laughs> yeah. I work for state, and even here's even he is even something funny. I work for state government. That's... I'm an accountant, state government. <laughs> Something's not right with that. Sounds like an oxymoron for some reason. <laughs> uh, yeah. And so my my coworkers and my boss would say the same, <laughs> <laughs> but um, and you know, I, I thought about the girls off and on, you know, yeah. and I met my wonderful, loving, the best man in the world, supportive husband that I'm with now. And what was so cool is he didn't care 
it was really funny. One of my friends who knows both of us, my husband and I had been dating about, oh, six or seven months. And uh, my friend goes, dude, do you know how lucky you are? <laughs> and my husband's like, like we've been just, this is when we just started dating. My husband goes, yeah, Sandy's a great gal. <laughs> no, you realize who you're dating. You realize how lucky you are. Yeah, I'm dating Sandy. No, she's from Glow. What's Glow? Oh, he no. has seen <laughs> Clue. He didn't know. He, he had, wow. <laughs> he had seen Glow when he, he used to watch. He, he had seen Glow when he would go over to his cousins on occasion. It wasn't until we found some stuff on YouTube and he saw me put my hand on my hip and stomp my foot where he went, yep, that's my wife. Oh, that's too funny. Oh, my God. <laughs> and when he threw me over her lap and thanked me, my husband, <laughs> God love him, goes, yeah, I'd know that ass anywhere. And I'm like, oh, boy, honey, no. Oh, that's and awesome. <laughs> What happened was my husband had made a comment on a YouTube video. Okay. He said, on one of my matches, he said, that's my wife, cute little stinker, ain't she? <laughs> well, he immediately got an email saying, this is Daisy. Tell Grimlina she better call my ass now. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and like I said, she's six foot two. When Daisy tells you to call her, you call her. <laughs> yeah. And Daisy told me, you know, I, I reconnected through Daisy, and then Daisy got me on Facebook, and that's when I started reconnecting with the other girls. I then got a call and talked to Little Egypt mm. about the documentary, mm. and I was I was supposed to, I was supposed to be in that reunion. Oh, okay. But uh, five day, uh, uh, the week before the reunion, I had got hit with a major financial blow. Mm, mm, like mm. four tires on our car. Oh, my God. Mm. And it just drained my savings. So I couldn't afford to fly out there. Oh, yeah. And documentary guys, they tried. They tried. Mm. They couldn't juggle enough. So at the last minute, I couldn't go out to the documentary. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, and it wasn't until a year later at Cauliflower Alley Club that I got to see the girls after 27 years. Oh, that's amazing. That's and big hugs. I got to meet Ashley Cartier for the first time. Oh, how cool. Wow. I was thinking that I admit I walked out a bit. <laughs> that's all right. That's okay. And Hollywood, she sees me, she goes, hey, my little Facebook buddy, you know, and just seeing everybody again. Oh, that's wonderful. And, you know, I wish, I think there should be a part two and three to the documentary. I think there's a lot that wasn't told. Yes, much agreed. I think that a lot of the girls have stories that could have been and would have been a great addition to the documentary. But bottom line, I think it was beautifully done. It mm -hmm. was well. It was well done. Yeah. It was very classy. It it wasn't trash or trite or reality TV. It was very heartfelt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was very real. The friendships and emotions that were shown in that are real. Oh, yeah. The way we all feel about each other. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it could, you know, the only thing better, like I said, is if they do a part two and three and continue the story. They could, there's so much that could be told. You're right. There's so much more content. And, I mean, you could just get hours and hours of footage from each Glow Girl and their experience and their stories. Because, I, I mean, just talking to you here, I mean, it's amazing, you know, what we've touched on. But, oh, my God, like, uh, I, I'm totally with you. I think they should definitely do that. Oh, agreed. What about another project that's being revived now, uh, in a way, you know, um, what are your thoughts of Wrestlelicious, um, the new promotion? <laughs> Ooh, I love Johnny C. <laughs> Just leave it at that. <laughs> I love, you know, and I, I don't, I haven't seen any of it. Okay. Bluntly. 
I have seen some of Janair's work, and I've seen some of the photos of the girls. Mm -hmm. And, of course, I love my juvie hall, Kayla, Roxy's daughter. There you go. Yep. I mean, Roxy's kids are amazing, and Kayla is Kayla's going to be a force to keep a lookout for that girl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She, she's got it. She's got it. And, you know, I... I think it's cool. I, you know, and of course, being old school, I love Jimmy Hart. I adore Johnny C and Steve Blantz mm -hmm. from Glow. I honestly, and this is going to, I'm not trying to sound nasty or arrogant or, you can't make lightning strike twice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Glow. And this is coming from a, a fan of wrestling since 1970. Mm -hmm. Okay, when I was six years old. Mm -hmm. Glow did something that had never been seen before, that True. had never been done before. True, you're right. We never... It's just like you couldn't duplicate a fabulous moolah. You couldn't duplicate a Princess Victoria. Mm -hmm. You couldn't duplicate a Wendy Richter, a Leilani Kai. <laughs> You know, they're true innovators. Mm -hmm. I mean, without those women, there would be no glow. Ergo, without glow, you would have no divas. That's very true. Very, very true. But the one thing glow has that the divas don't, we didn't all look alike. We weren't all these cookie cutter, yep. perfect bodies, perfect teeth, perfect face, perfect everything. Oh, yeah. We weren't. No, you, had, mm -hmm. you had black, white, Latino, uh, Samoan. You had every size from four foot eight and a half inches tall. <laughs> to six to two six with Daisy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you had Mount Fiji, Matilda mm -hmm. the Hunt. Yep. Oh my God. You had well, if 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 America and the world is about diversity now, oh yeah, Glow was that we were the epitome of diversity, and I don't think you know if Resolution takes off and becomes a rousing success, God bless them. Mm -hmm. I have nothing but props, and I'd be happy to you know I'd be I'd be I jokingly told Johnny C, if you ever want me to pop in, I'll do it. No, oh, yeah, certainly. I'm sure they would take you up on it. You know, I, I would think they'd want uh, any of the uh, original Glow Girls to, uh, at, as much input and help as possible. I mean, it just makes sense. Uh, you know, and it's not like that I haven't kept my finger in the business. I w I've, from 2010 until last year, I worked for an independent here in Virginia. I was a manager. I was commissioner and manager. Yep, yep. I saw that in my research, and uh, so it sounds like wrestling's just been in your blood pretty much your whole life. Obviously, it sounds like. Yeah, it's a sickness. Yeah. <laughs> a healthy sickness, though. It's a good addiction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can't say. You know, honestly, about 1994, I have not been following the WWE, and my interest and outlook and the way that wrestling has evolved from when I grew up watching it to, like I said, 1994 is when I just finally said, I can't deal with the WWE right like it is. Mm -hmm. And the WWE is, you know, Vince, give him credit. You don't have that kind of power and influence and that kind of a product if you're doing it all wrong. But, yeah. you know, I I miss the days of the hour long matches. I miss the steamboat flare hour long matches. Mm, I miss I miss the charisma of Roddy Piper. I miss mm -hmm. the 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 chill you got when you heard the Undertaker's bell toll. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's lacking in the WWE now. I couldn't Not agree with you it, more. I totally agree with you. <laughs> it's a different. Uh... Different world for sure, uh, with what it was uh, back then. I I get all my wrestling now uh, by going to uh, YouTube or um, you know just going back and watching old school stuff. Yeah, and that includes, of course, Glow. I mean, you guys were at the hottest. I think during the hottest peak, you know, arguably uh, 
during that time because that was some really good wrestling, both from WWE and NWA or WCW back then. So I, I would totally well, agree. Uh, and uh, as Steve Blance pointed out, well, we did a screening in New York uh, of the documentary, and mm-hmm. Steve was telling that there were, back in its heyday, and this is something that Vince will never admit to, but go search research. We even beat the WWF in ratings. I could totally believe it. Yeah, yeah, I could totally believe that. Uh, the entertainment from Glow was just something that you brought so much uh, on television to attract, I would think, a bigger market of people because, you know, again, it's women, uh, beautiful women, and wrestling, and, you know, you guys had an aggressive style. You weren't going out there and, you know, sugarcoating anything. You were really intense and working stiff. It looked like, you know, snug, I should say, hard with each other. And uh, anybody watching it, that was just a wonderful, wonderful time. Absolutely. It was wonderful for us girls doing it, too. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Now, um, Grimley, let me ask you this. Um, Now we're talking about something else that's coming up here. Uh, Very soon in the near future, we've got the uh, Afterglow 2. So it's the Party at the Sea Cruise coming up, and I know you're going to be there. I think one of uh, 11 original Glow Girls, is that right? And possibly more. And possibly more. So, yeah, are you, um, so this cruise, let's talk. I think this is coming up uh, May 22nd through the 25th. And, uh, yeah. yeah, what, what yes. else is, what, what can the people out there listening to uh, expect um, for this cruise when they're uh, going there? All I'm going to say is if you haven't booked your cabin, get it now. Very well said. <laughs> the, price, the prices right now are, are for the cruise are amazing. Yep. They're going to go up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And let's, let's see. How, how could you pass up Casino Night with Hollywood? <laughs> how could you pass up Surfing Lessons with Sunny the California Girl? <laughs> yeah, exactly. How could you pass up a 1980s glow disco with MTV? <laughs> oh, and... Uh, how could you pass up an onboard scavenger hunt that Glendina <laughs> is making the clues up for? That's going to be awesome. <laughs> okay, you'll have, all, you'll have, uh, like I said, you'll have me, you'll have Roxy, you'll have Hollywood, Daisy. Yes, Glendina and Daisy are back together. <laughs> that that's worth the admission alone, right there. <laughs> Um, Sunny the California girl. Uh, um, she's. Uh, I think Roxy's been talking to Zelda. Okay. And okay. Angel from season one, Jail Bait, uh, Little Egypt, Johnny C. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yep. And if you saw the Afterglow fan party DVD, we will be holding a fan party like that where we will have fans in the hot seat. That's right. Roxy, yes. Roxy's working on some more surprises. She's going to be doing a fanumentary. She was telling us about that in the last podcast. That That is awesome. I, I've never heard anything like that. That is incredible. It's very well, creative. When Roxy approached me, she called me and said, Hey, Graham, i got to bounce an idea off you. And she told me what her vision for the Afterglow party was. Oh, okay. Okay. I... I immediately said, sign me up. It's a brilliant. <laughs> I said, because honestly, and I'm not taking away anything from any of these women. Like you said, there are, all of them are stunning. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're still beautiful, still classy, still wonderful women. Definitely. But, but we're all in our 50s now. There's more than a little bit of ring rust, maybe, Except for Hollywood and Lightning, mm. Mm. continue the stunt work and stuff like that. Yeah, and, you know. But we're fifty, and you know, Roxy and I were talking about it, and it really is the fans. Yeah, is where it is, and Glow is remembered the thirty years later, and Glow is what it is because of those fans, mm. because of fans like Sylvester Bowler. My buddy. Mm-hmm. He's a folk historian. 
He is a walking glow encyclopedia. Shout out to my boy Sylvester. Love you, dude. <laughs> he's, he's my favorite phone date. I, 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 I can't say enough. <laughs> Michael Carr, who's done a glow blog and who, he, who helped us reunite a lot of the ladies. Uh, Adrian Duarte, huge glow fan. Diana Prince. Mm-hmm. Sean Campbell, those beautiful sculpted pops. I mean, these are fans that, oh my God, how can you not want to give back something? And this is Roxy's way of, and our way. All the girls who participate in the Afterglow fan parties, this is all our way of saying we love you fans, we thank you fans, and we want to hear your stories. We want to hear what glow meant to you. Because we know, I mean, we didn't have, the glow girls didn't have perfect lives. Like I said, I'm four foot eight. I wear glasses. (laughs) Can you imagine what I was like in high school? I wasn't that big. (laughs) I was bullied. You know, I'm very much anti-bullying. I jump on any anti-bullying campaign I can join. Yep, definitely. Uh, I mean, I I was told, oh, you're too small for this. You can't. Okay, I'm too small. <laughs> how do you like, you know, to quote Toby Keith, well, how do you like me now? <laughs> you know, and that's just the, that's the attitude all the girls have. We're all fighters. We're all survivors. We're all, I like to say that I had the privilege, pleasure, and honor of working with some of the most strong, independent, intelligent empowered women on the planet and that will never be taken away from me absolutely so let me tell you something mm-hmm. one of our fans and i won't give it away is making the girl cruise part of his honeymoon oh that's so cool that's awesome and they're coming from the eastern side of mexico to california oh my god wow that's incredible so, you know, come on, give me excuses and I'll knock him down for you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We need to, I'll give you his personal number uh, and we'll talk to those groomsmen and knock some sense in them. That, that's, I love it though. Uh, that, that is so cool. What, that'd be like you the don't best. Want to do that. I still have my whip. <laughs> I actually <laughs> have the whip. I'm going to tell him. <laughs> my husband, God love him, took a, a grainy photograph of me. And went on the web and found an exact replica of my whip oh, how that cool. I had. Oh my God! Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. and um, so and you know, no, no funny stuff, people. <laughs> really that way, but I do have and I do carry my whip when I do appearances because <laughs> it, let's face it, that That's was my awesome. character. Absolutely, and you lived it up, uh, yeah. Yeah, but like I said, you know, these cabins ain't, you know, there, there was only a limited number of cabins put aside for this cruise. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, they're going to go fast once we start really doing the heavy push. Absolutely, and we're going to plug the website as well for the folks watching so that yeah. they can uh, get a chance to uh, sign By all up, means, I mean, it, you know, I, I can't tell you. I can tell you, Roxy is beside herself with excitement about this. Yeah. I'm so excited about this. I'm like, is it May yet? And my husband's like, shut up. <laughs> because uh, God bless him, he's going to stay behind and take care of our fur babies, our pets. Oh, that's nice. Wow. He, told me, he said, I'm going to let you go and have fun with the ladies. Oh, that's really he sweet said, of him. Yeah. So, and I told him, I said, I said, okay. He goes, just don't get arrested. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm like, ah, crap. Um, <laughs> well, do you realize who you were married to? And then he laughs. He goes, yeah. He goes, but you're, you're going to have Daisy. She can bring you in. And I'm like, ah, oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> oh, and speaking of uh, legends, Dallas from season one will be on the cruise. Ah, oh, there you go. Excellent. Probably one of the most brutal glow matches ever was her brass knuckles, was her Texas barroom brawl with Minichka. I'll have to go back and research and watch that. Uh, she is great. Huh. Very, very cool. Wow. Yeah. Well, I great. mean, it, 
just said, how can you go wrong? I mean, it's going to be fun. And if you've never been on a cruise, I've never been on a cruise before. This is my first cruise. I've never seen Catalina or Mexico. I mean, I'm just excited for, I'm excited to mingle with the fans that I've yeah. become friends. Well, actually, my family I've become friends with on Facebook. And, of course, any chance I get to see the girls, I jump at. I find a way. And, you know, because a lot of times I can't make it out to the East, West Coast when they do stuff. Mm -hmm. And by the same token, it's hard for them to make it to the East Coast when I'm, like, up in Rhode Island doing Rhode Island Comic Con and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's definitely... It's a, it's, I hope it's not going to be a once-in-a-lifetime experience, but we'll just have to see how this one goes. I think it's going to be successful, and I think you guys are going to have a blast. And I honestly, like, just looking at the uh, you know whole model of uh, how this is playing out, I could see an annual, you know, every year thing coming, and maybe not only like a cruise, but then the next year you guys, you know, going out and doing an excursion or going to an island. I could see this starting to be, um, you know, the start of something amazing here. This, this sounds really cool. Well, from your mouth to whoever's ears, because, <laughs> I mean, I, I would love the chance to see the girls more. Yeah, yeah, you need to, definitely. I mean, it, it, I love that you guys are being able to get together, and and, and I'm hoping yeah. that it'll be uh, have an opportunity to get more of the Glow Girls together, too, and that they'll all uh, be able to come out there. Okay. I know Roxy has been talking to several good, other good. that are on the page. Good. Uh, um, I know. I know that Angel from season one has said she's on board. Okay. I good. heard talk that maybe Matilda the Hun. Oh, cool, cool. Uh, and like I said, Roxy's talking with Zelda right now. Good. But even without that, you've got Lightning, you've got Hollywood, you've mm -hmm. got Dallas, you've got Little Egypt, you've got me, you've got Roxy, you've got Sonny, you've got Jailbait. I mean... And Johnny C. Johnny C. Um, got MTV. There you go. I mean, it's just going to be a load of fun, and it's just going to be great to hear the stories. You know, from the fans, it's going to be great to hang out, you know, because the itinerary has been posted, the tentative itinerary has been posted. I mean, we're going to have dinner every night, a glow dinner every night where the fans can have dinner with us. Nice. We're going to have meet and greet and signings. We're going to have an onboard mixer the first day. I mean, we just want the fans to have as much fun as we do. And this is our way of just, it's like a love letter to the fans. We just want to have some fun and just appreciate our fans. That's beautiful. Very, very nice. Well, Gremlina, I can't wait again. Uh, we're four months out, so uh, we got a lot we got a lot of time here, but it's going to slowly and quickly approach us. But um, if anybody out there uh, is listening, Gremlina, and um, – they're wanting to contact you directly or if they have any questions after listening to this podcast or just want to even say hi, uh, what's the best methods of contact that they can reach out to you directly? Um, I'm a Facebook ho. <laughs> um, seriously, I, 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 I'm sitting here on my iPad checking my Facebook right now. Um, I'm a Facebook ho. It's Sandy Gremlina Manley. I also have a public page for my character, Gremlina. I also have a page, and I'm going to stir some crap now. Give Gremlina a chance. It's, to, it's getting people to tell the WWE, I need to be Sister Abigail in the Wyatt family. Oh, I would love that. That would be awesome. <laughs> so I can be found on, on Facebook. Um, I have a Twitter, at Gremlina Glow. Okay. Um, I... I'm very easy to get along with. All you got to do is, A, realize that I'm married happily. Don't push <laughs> the boundaries there. Treat, treat my fans and the Glow Girls with respect. Mm -hmm. And we have no problem. If you're going to be a creep, a freak, or insulting, or... 
nasty or disrespectful, then sorry, I know how to delete and block. That's right. And folks, she means it. She's not going to accept your friend requests. She's got her whip. So just remember that. Yeah, I do. And, you know, I don't turn down friend requests, but if you start getting a little nasty or <laughs> start saying, you know, when, when, you know, start pushing the envelope, even though I repeatedly tell you, oh, that's sweet, but I'm married. And you're like, oh, well, you know, and I've had to delete and block some guys who are like, Oh, well, so what if you're married? And I'm like, hold on, time out. <laughs> Sounds like there's and, a lot of creepers out there. <laughs> and, and just, you know, for those who want to disrespect that, my husband is co-head of security at Vanguard Championship Wrestling and knows about uh, every Vanguard Championship wrestler, and uh, you don't want to mess with that. Mm-mm. There you go. That's anybody watching, remember, you got to be nice and... Uh, be respectful, and uh, she will accept your friend request then. <laughs> Just remember, the people that come on my page, some of them are my coworkers at the state. Mm-hmm. Some of them are my blood family. Mm-hmm. Some of them are friends that have children that are on Facebook. <clears throat> you know, and just keep it nice. You know, keep it clean. Keep it to where you know. I'll admit, I can be flirty, I can be a little risque and all that, but, you know, just you know the lines. Treat treat the glow girls like you would treat your sister. There you go. And, uh, you know, uh, Grimlene, I'm sorry, I forgot to ask you about this. Uh, we're going to have to do another podcast together very soon because I did want to talk to you uh, next time about the uh, Cloverleaf Radio Show. Let's definitely plug at least that uh, right now before we let you go. Yeah. Um. Well, uh, for five years, going on six, I have been co-host of Cloverleaf Radio on Blog Talk Radio. Okay. I work with the host of the most, Jimmy Falcon. We it started out. It's a it's a variety show. We've inter, we've interviewed voice actors. Okay. Like Lily Kinney, the voice of Tony the Tiger. Uh, oh, cool! Wow. We've interviewed like. Uh, Butch Patrick from the Monsters. We've interviewed oh. movie stars. Nice. We've interviewed Marion, uh, Marilyn Gigliotti from Clerks. We've interviewed people from The Walking Dead. <clears throat> of course, when you have Jimmy, who's a former wrestler and manager, and me, a former wrestler and manager, mm-hmm. you will see wrestlers. We've interviewed Kurt Angle. I mean, the oh. list. Okay. And go to the Cloverleaf Radio on Blog Talk Radio, and the archives are all our matches. We even have an interview in those archives from 2013 with the infamous Matt Simber, the director of Glow. Very cool. I'll check that out. Uh, oh, I'm glad yeah. you told me. I, I'll put that, because, uh, yeah, I noticed that when I was doing my research, and I saw the Blog Talk Radio link. We'll get that up on the um, video podcast, too, uh, before we go. Yeah, but, uh, uh, I fact is I did <laughs> It's been a busy week for me. I did an interview with Rope to Rope Radio Sunday. Wow. I did, I think, two interviews on my show, Cloverleaf. Okay. Last night I did an interview on Power Slam Wrestling, <laughs> and today I'm doing yours. It's been a busy week. <laughs> this has. Well, Grimlina, you know, I can't thank you enough with your busy schedule coming right here on Go Tier TV, and uh, we'd love to have you back on very soon in the near future. And, um uh, yeah. Just enjoy this time. The, you've got the digits. You know how to get a hold of me. Perfect. And uh, yeah, well, listen. Uh, take care. And uh, enjoy. now, uh, one more last question to ask you: Where in Virginia are we talking to you from? Where do you live? I'm in Richmond, the capital. Richmond, Virginia. Okay, all the way from Richmond, Virginia. And uh, like I said, let's definitely have you back on here in the near future and delve more into the uh, Cloverleaf uh, Radio Show because uh, I'd like to ask you some more uh, questions about that as well. No problem. Perfect. And as we get closer to, um, yeah, uh, I'll do my part. I'll work on those um, uh, Grimsman for the bachelor party for my friend and see if I can, uh, you know, oh, yeah. see if we can persuade them and tell them that I'll be sending you after them if they don't uh, sign up and register. And I'll bring Daisy. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, Grimlina, yeah. Thank you again. Uh, you are awesome. Uh, I really appreciate your time. I can't thank you enough. And uh, again, no just problem. 
It was wonderful having you, and uh, I, I can't wait to have you back on here very soon in the near future. Okay, cool, anytime. All right, folks, well, that was Gremlina, and again, uh, here comes her contact information one more time. Destruction. 